Answers live on the National Television Network, NTN. We are here today from the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and uh, Labor to focus on an issue which, if left unchecked, can shock the entire nation. My name is Shannon Lebon, the Communications Officer at the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. Electrical safety is our topic for discussion. And my guest, Mr. Shane Jha, the Acting Chief Electrical Engineer. Mr. Jha. Thanks for joining us today on the program. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Lebon. First of all, we, we want to discuss the roles and functions of um, your department, the electrical department of, of the ministry. So tell us, what, what is the mandate of, of, of your team and what is it that you do? Okay, first of all, I'm going to start by explaining to you what, is, what exactly is the electrical department. The electrical department basically forms part of the Ministry of Infrastructure. We basically have two offices, the main one being at Union Castries, and we also have a, a, an auxiliary office at, the, at the, the infrastructure building in Viewfort, that's in Latuni. Um, this, the electrical department basically is headed by the chief electrical engineer, deputized, who is in turn depu deputized by the electrical engineer. We have a reception staff and also an inspection staff. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that the, that the electrical engineer, the electrical, ins, the electrical department does? The electrical department basically has four functions, and basically has, among other things, right, four functions. And I'm going to elaborate on all four of them briefly. First of all, we issue new licenses to electricians, to individuals that want to become electricians. So basically that is usually done via an exam that mm -hmm is issued every year. Secondly, when you see there is a, a structural fire or a, 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 a fatal electrical accident incident, like the one we, we, we recently had at, um, at Lackley, right? The electrical department is supposed to investigate these incidents. Thirdly, we, we do, um, we issue basically, we issue the, we, we, we are the ones that deal basically with the street lighting program. Mm -hmm. So basically when somebody wants street lighting, they come to us. We put their names down and after that we, we carry out our investigations and then these, these, these lights are issued. Mm -hmm. And fourthly and possibly, what you're going to be considered to be most importantly, we carry out electrical inspections, testing and certification of new existing and temporary installations. Right, I, I think that last point is, is maybe um, what drives the most business to, to your department, what, what drives the most um, citizens' interest to, to the, the work of your department, that function of um, obtaining an, an uh, electrical um, connections. Citizens have to go through your office. Share with us what is, what is that procedure like? Okay, you see, when uh, uh, an install when someone is, is starting the, the construction process, and a lot of people do not know that, but as soon as they are about to start the construction process, we should be informed, right? We we, that is usually done via what is called a, a form D for new installations mm -hmm. and a form C for ex existing installations that they are upgrading, right? So therefore, that's the first thing that is that is done, and that is so therefore that the client or whoever it is, the stakeholder, right? will hire the electrician, and that electrician must be certified. And that is very important. And not, there, there are lots of electricians out there, right? Mm -hmm. But the electrician has to be certified. So therefore, that person will have an ID saying that, with a, a, saying that they're an electrician and they have a number, right? If, we, <coughs> if they have doubts, obviously, they can call the electrical department and they, we can verify that for them. After that form D, right? The person goes along, <coughs> the, 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 the installation is basically constructed. Things, um, wires and so on, <coughs> sorry, wires are, are 
are installed, its fixtures are installed, right? And then at the end of that process, right? That is assuming that is not a very long phase, right? Mm -hmm. if, it's some, if it's a construction, if it's a, a, a facility like a hotel or something like that that takes a very long period of time, right? What we do periodically, usually every two weeks or every month, right? We go, we visit the right. site to see if, if, if to see if everything is going according to plan, right? Then, right, at the end of the the, the installation process, the the electrician will now apply it to us. They apply it to us, and within a period of, they, they paid what the fees that are required, right? right? And of, within a period of, let's say, five days, right, the inspectors go to that installation, they carry out the inspections, the testing, right? We collect the results, we return to the office, we analyze it, we do the necessary recording, right, and then the, the certificate, the final certificate is drawn up, mm -hmm. and afterwards that is signed by the, the chief electrical engineer. Right. So therefore the entire process basically takes about eight days. A number of steps. Um, is the aim ready to ensure safety at the end of the day? The key there is ensuring safety. Right. That's the key. Right. As a matter of fact, that's the, the whole purpose of the electrical department. Ensuring that facilities out there, electrical installations out there are safe. Mm -hmm. And I need to repeat something. It doesn't matter if it, it that, that, that should be for new installations and install, existing installations that are being upgraded. Right, right. I'm sure we'll discuss um, that in further detail shortly. But you spoke about the inspectors who are attached to your department. Who are they? How can persons identify that these are legitimate officers of the department and and what are some of the the, the, the operations of those those team members okay the electrical inspectors when the, the electrical inspectors can easily be identified because they carry an id so therefore when they reach whatever installation it is the the the, the, the client the the installation owner right can ask to see that id right what it is that they do, usually they, they go to the installation, they go to the installation, right? And the first thing that they do, they carry out what is called a visual inspection. Mm -hmm. now, a, vi a visual inspection basically will entail, right? Ensuring that there is a ground outside. That is that um, different um, fixtures are not broken, right? Basically ensuring that the installation is complete. Mm -hmm. That is what they call the, inspe the inspection mm -hmm. fees, okay. right? Afterwards, right? They're going to do what is called testing. Now the testing phase involves right the use of the equipment that they carry around right in that little yellow box yeah. right and they will usually they carry out most of the inspections from from the, the electrical panel right they carry they carry out what they call insulation readings to ensure that all wires during the installation process they are still intact right also they carry out um what is called um continuity readings to ensure that this this cable leaving this point on the panel is truly as the design sees right going to that point mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and um also what they do they also ensure that um the ne the necessary um how can i describe that Bre electrical breakers right they are of the correct rating right. right right and up to standard up to standard yeah absolutely it it, it it's definitely an expert um operation expert task the, the the work of those um, electrical inspectors and definitely the work of the electrical department we hear from the ministry of infrastructure ports energy and the labor we focus in on electrical safety and the operations of the electrical department we're due for our very first break on issues and answers live on the national television network we'll be back in a moment pamela I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? 
No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to the program. On the first segment, we gave you an introduction to the rules and functions of the electrical department. The key priority, as explained by the acting chief electrical engineer, Mr. Shane Jean, is to ensure safety throughout um, the length and breadth of St. Lucia. Electrical inspection and um, permits for mass crowd events, another very important function of your, your team. We're heading into the carnival season where we have many mass crowd events and I'm sure you, you want to alert members of the public and promoters in particular that they have to follow um, what is enshrined in law and get electrical inspections and permits for those events. First of all, why, why, is, why is this important? Absolutely. And um, especially coming into the, the carnival and jazz season, right? We, we, we know for a fact that we are going to have a lot of mass crowd events. Usually these are going to involve open field events where tents are going to be, to be installed. But as with any, any event like that, right, they are going to be, elect, they're going to be um, 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 electrical equipment. Because obviously the, the, the loudspeakers have to be powered up. A lot of these events are held at night, right? So therefore, you require some level of illumination, which, which involves obviously the installation of lighting, the means of switching, obviously. On some occasions, you have vendors that are selling stuff. So therefore, they require power to, to whether it is to, to warm up the food so that they can sell and so on and so forth. Now, what has happened in the past? In the past, right, and it continues to happen up until today that stakeholders, right, what they will basically do, an events host, what basically they will do, they will simply hire an electrician, right? They, these, these, um, these installations are going to be constructed, right? And afterwards, because they do not require, right, a, um, um, a new connection from Lucilec, mm. they will not come up to us. Right? Because, you see, what they usually do usually, because the, 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 the energy, the electricity that will power up, right, these events are already existing. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's almost like an extension. They basically take the power from an existing facility, right, right and power up the event. Now, this is not just illegal, right? It is also unsafe, right? Because what, what procedure they are supposed to follow? The... The electrician or whoever is cons constructing this, this, um, this, um, this, the, uh, putting up these points for these mass events, right? First of all, they're, they're supposed to construct them, and then they're supposed to follow the correct procedure. And that involves, right, applying to us, and then we send out our team there, right, our electrical inspection team. We go out there, we do the necessary inspections, ensure that it is safe, which is basically the, the, what we, we should all be concerned about. And then we, we're supposed to issue a certificate to them. And all this is supposed to happen before the show starts. Before. Right. Um, you, you, almost, you almost opened a can of worms. And it, it's maybe important that we are here today to put the information out there so people know what the procedure is and know what they should do so we don't find ourselves in a situation where we have a mass, mass crowd... Um, um, mascot fatality on absolutely. our fatality absolutely absolutely and let me you know, also elaborate on something right this is particularly important because you see on some occasions some of these mascot events are close to water mm -hmm. and some of the procedures mm -hmm. that that for example some of the the the, 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 the points some of the, the fixtures that are normally installed do not meet that standard mm -hmm. They don't meet that standard at all. So therefore, it's all these things that we are there to verify. What is the legislative backing that you have um, to deal with, 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 with this issue? You see, the electrical department, basically, we don't just go out there mm -hmm. and carry out inspections, mm -hmm. right? We do that by law. We get our mandate, basically, our legal mandate comes from what is called uh, the Electricity Supply Act. And the Electricity Supply Act, basically, you can describe it as, right, that part of the legislation that deals with generation, um, transmission, this, and distribution of electrical energy. Right, so there is a law. There is a law, there absolutely. There is a law. There is a law. Um, this is the first step to sensitize um, people. You have the, the, the legal backing, but um, heading forward, I'm sure you will really be going out there and ensure you inspect those... Um, 
those events and enforce the law? Absolutely, we have to. I'm, I'm going to assume that at, uh, on, on many occasions these, these things happen because people are not aware. Okay. So therefore this program we are having right now, it is very important in, in, in informing the public as to right. what they have to do, right? Some of the, the papers, the, the certificates that they're supposed to obtain right. when they, they, they are, they're going to have a, 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 an event like this of Ab this nature. Absolutely, and we look forward to the support of the event promoters and even patrons to ensure that the various procedures are followed so that the people at the bars coming into the venue and at these shows are safe throughout the duration. As we concluded the discussion, we just wanted to focus quickly on um, illegal extensions of established connections. You, you have a number of domestic and even commercial um, enterprises looking to extend um, on existing connections and, and, and there is a procedure where Absolutely. This, is, this is like the, the, the illegal um, extension of um, electrical energy into um, mass crowd events, right? This also happens with existing structures also. For example, let's take for instance that. I don't know if you recall earlier on that I mentioned that one of our functions basically is to um, test and inspect not only new installations mm -hmm. but upgrades to existing installations. Absolutely. So what will happen on most occasions that because the electricity is there already and they did not require a new certificate so that Lucilec gives them a connection a lot of stakeholders or clients, what they will basically do is to hire an electrician and extend on an existing structure. Now, a lot of things can happen, right? Uh, and I'm going, to explain very, I'm going to explain why it is important to bring the Ministry of Infrastructure the, um, ex the electrical department into play when something like that happens. You see, on some occasions, by, simply by extending existing installation, right? Mm -hmm. You've changed a lot of things, right? You've increased on the load. And let's say, for example, on, on, most, on some occasions, the main panel is not changed, or the main breaker, the main isolate is not changed, or some other breakers are not changed. So basically what you've done is to add more load, mm -hmm. basically. But the, 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 the origin, where the, the electrical energy is coming from, the, the breakers and so on, that has not been, that has not been, that has not been mani um, changed at all, you see. So therefore it is, that is the reason, and automatically the installation will become unsafe. So though it was safe initially, now that it has been upgraded, or, 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 or or tampered with, right? It is. It has now become unsafe, right? Mm -hmm. So it's for all these reasons that the electrical department has to become involved when existing structures are being upgraded. Absolutely, Mr. Shinji. I want to thank you for first of all accepting our invitation to be here on this program, and secondly for um, giving off all that valuable information to members of the public who we now believe are more educated on the various procedures that they should should follow. These issues, I'm sure you would agree, can shock the entire country if left unchecked. We do not want to leave them unchecked. This is why we have begun the discussion and we are here today on Issues and Answers Live on the National Television Network. My guest today was Mr. Shin Jean, the Acting Chief Electrical Engineer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. This was just a first peek into the work of the Electrical Department. We will be sure to catch up again and discuss exactly what is being done by Mr. Shane and his team to ensure safety procedures and uh, allow um, for safety throughout the length and breadth of uh, St. Lucian to avoid electrical mishaps. My name is Shannon LeBron. On behalf of the entire team here at the National Television Network, thank you so much for joining us.